Why does everybody keep on hiring me? All of my work is shit. Hey, Malcolm. Hey, Critic. Did you know one third of the world's oranges are grown in Brazil? What an odd thing to say. Eh, I guess it's my quirk. Oranges. Okay, I'm gonna go shoot the review now. As you know, there are two types of people in this world. Those who believe that evil is good, and those who believe that evil is evil. Tamara, why are you spewing that sloppy, unfocused philosophy? I hear you whispering. Plan on stealing something? Why is nobody talking right today? Plan on murdering me in my sleep? What? No! Wait a minute. It's affecting me now. Around 85% of oranges are produced for juice. Oranges are domestic. As you know, the world is filled with people who do not understand the ramifications. Well, now that you're here, I might as well make you suffer, although I really don't know why. During his second voyage in 1493, oranges are produced because juice is kind of crazy. My god. I know what this is. I know what's going on here. This is. the shamalizing. A camera we can all get obnoxiously close to! As you know, I should have seen the warning signs, the bad monotone acting, the dialogue that makes no sense whatsoever, and... Europe loving all of this for some reason! Who knows who will be next? If I'm not careful, all of us could end up like the actors from The Happening! Based on a title so lazily vague that the film does everything in its power to justify it, there's something happening in a few states. Could this really be happening? Whatever's happening is happening population. Happening. 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 The Happening has garnered a reputation as one of the most entertainingly bad movies ever made. Yep, right up there with The Room, Troll 2, and Give It Time. For years we've made references to this train wreck, but have never given it a full review analyzing why it's so bad, it's actually kind of amazing. So let's take a look to figure out what, how, and... Well, we'll never figure out why, it's Shyamalan. This is The Happening! It starts off in New York as two women do what Shyamalan thinks two women do, read a book at the same time. I forgot where I am. You're at the place where the killers meet to decide what to do with the crippled girl. <laughs> That's right. Good thing I was reading the exact same sentence. As the crowd suddenly realizes they're on The Truman Show. Where? Well, that's what I would do if I found out I was in the happening. Just down the street doesn't seem to be much better. Christ Mackenzie fell. Oh no, not poor Christ Mackenzie! But it's raining men as everybody's apparently committing suicide or having a hell of a time catching roadrunners. This leads us to our main character, Elliot, played by Mark Wahlberg. Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. If you have not burst out into laughter yet from the mere delivery of that line, then you are watching the greatest drama you've ever seen in your life. No, seriously, where's the real performance? That can't be for real. This is scary, huh? I mean, this is Mark Wahlberg, a pretty damn good actor. But I'm not kidding, he does the whole performance like this. It's like he's on a 2 a.m. infomercial. Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. Scary, huh? Well, now you can track him down with our new honeybee tracker. Order now and you'll also receive a free Sam Wow. As we quickly discover, he's not that great a teacher either. Jake, you don't have an opinion? Should be more interested in science, Jake. You know why? It'll make you talk like Luke Skywalker if his whininess levels were pushed to 20? Because your face is perfect. Now, if you were interested in science, you would know facts like the human nose and ears grow a fraction of an inch each year. So a perfect balance of features now might not look so perfect five years from now. Take an interest in science. Yes, take an interest in science after I literally insulted your face. Hey, Susie, you interested in science? Well, that's because you're a slut. In typical Shyamalan style, Jake comes up with the laziest answer worded in a way that's trying to sound important. An act of nature and we'll never fully understand it. And that's how you got a D in this class, kid! Nice answer, Jake. Oh, a nice answer, Jake. And science will come up with some reason to put in the books. I mean, we will fail to acknowledge that there are forces at work beyond our understanding. Yeah, great science teacher there. Something, something, something magic. Like all great scholars, he acknowledges that science is just a temporary solution for the real answer, which is just shrugging your arm saying, I don't know. The Dark Lord, don't look into her eyes. Ooh. Vice Principal, what can we do for you? Well, you can clear out your desk, asshole. What do you think I'm gonna say after that? 
So while the teachers are forced to abandon their students, typical protocol, as they're all gathered in one room to be told about the crisis sweeping America. Central Park was just hit by what seems to be a terrorist attack. It's some kind of airborne chemical toxin that's been released in and around the park. There appears to be an event happening. Okay, that's a tragedy or an emergency. An event is a sale at Target. You know, for teachers, you're not very good with words. Central Park? That's kind of odd. Yeah, terrorists rarely go after landmarks with lots of people. This means all the students are let out early. What are the rules of scientific investigation? Identified variables, design and experiment, careful observation and measurement, interpretation of experimental data. Jesus Christ, and don't forget to recite the first two chapters of Moby Dick! Call me Ishmael. Some years ago, never mind how long precisely, having little or no money in my purse. My mother just called my cell again. She's hysterical. So while Wilbur's friend, played by John Leguizamo, establishes his strange quirk, being his mother. I threw some figures at her. I told her the probability of something happening in Philadelphia is very low. Hey, you stand out now! We're introduced to Alma, played by Zoe Deschanel. Is she leaving you? I didn't say that. It's just talk, okay? Just relax, please. Oh no, we're at the Shyamalan stage where- Critic, as you know, Jim and I have decided that we're in love even though we have no chemistry at all. whoopity do. No, it's bad. We're having trouble in our relationship. We fear we'll never be a couple again. No, no, that's just the Shyamalan talking. He always has a couple that's going through problems, but is obviously gonna get together in the end. No, Critic. As you know, this is pretty serious. We're having some incredibly vague problems that only a supernatural event can fix. Will you two be quiet? Oranges! Look, just stay in there, try to use logic, and for the love of God, don't be quirky! But quirky is charming. No, Jim, it's awkward! Awkward! There are 600 varieties of oranges! As you'd imagine, Deschanel's acting is about as bad as everyone else's, but there is a certain alien freakiness about her facial expressions. Yeah, she looks like this throughout the entire film. It's like in every shot she realized she shit her pants and she wants nobody to realize it. Her delivery isn't much better either. It makes you kill yourself. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more evil that could be invented. <laughs> How do you even direct somebody to say a line that way? All right, Zoe, I want you to act like you're deaf, but in saying this line, you're hearing yourself for the first time and you don't enjoy what you sound like. It makes you kill yourself. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more evil that could be invented. That was definitely a thing. So Wahlberg says he'll meet Deschanel and Leguizamo at the train station. Where's Alma? Restroom. Hey, Julian. Why the hell did you shoot it like that? Were you trying to make her look like a stalker? Hey, Julian. Ah! <laughs> My cabbages! Hey, Alma. How you doing? Hanging in there. Mm-hmm. Typical seven-year-old response. Hanging in there, still looking for a job, got those bills to pay. It's hard being a single mother. So while on the train, they're being told that the panic is spreading. You okay? They see Boston got hit too. Where'd you hear that? A friend from work. What about Yvette? Christ, that college girl who took theater as a blow-off class is acting better than you! The train stops suddenly as it looks like they're kicking everybody off. What do you mean? Where are we? Filbert, Pennsylvania. Does anybody know where that is? Hey, why would you just stop? You know, if you could take the whining of a dog and convert it into a language, it'd be this performance. Sorry. She whispers to us when she gets scared. We're so much the same, Jess. I don't like to show my emotions either. <laughs> yeah, to quote Wahlberg from earlier. Duh. With a capital. <clears throat> and the danger still seems to be spreading as one man says farewell to arms in the lion's den. Mother of God, what kind of terrorists are these? They're such hairy and yellow terrorists. They must be from the land of Oz. So everybody takes off as the virus seems to be right in their neighborhood, and Lake Wazamo decides to leave his daughter with Wahlberg so he can go back for his wife. Because things always turn out well for people who do that, right? She's gonna be a lot safer with you. I have to go. I got her, Julie. I'm gonna take my daughter's hand unless you need it. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Why don't you find another couple to look after the daughter you're lovingly abandoning? You're welcome, asshole! There's a car. Very good, Zoe. Now, can you tell which one's the plane? So Wahlberg's gang gets a ride with a guy who runs a plant nursery poorly located next to a nuclear power plant. Why do I get the feeling this is all streaming from there? Don't! Mr. Burns, I'm afraid I caused a happening. Simpson, you idiot! Now we're trapped in an M. Night Shyamalan film! And not one of the good ones! Either of them! <laughs> They're collecting a few things before they go when this bit of strangeness is said. We're packing hot dogs for the road. You know, hot dogs get a bad rap. They got a cool shape, they got protein. You like hot dogs, right? Brought to you by hot dogs! Want to be less cautious about where your meat comes from than chicken and nuggets? Hot dogs! I think I know what's causing this. You do? It's the plants. Wait, what? It's the plants. They can release chemicals. Wow. That's actually the twist of the movie. It's plants. I know it seems like I'm giving some stuff away early here, but the movie is giving some stuff away earlier here, so what do I care? We're not even one-third into the film, and you already gave away the big twist! You like hot dogs, don't you? Followed by that! D do you need to go back to Film 101? I think most people know this. You don't give away the twist before you give away the twist! You wouldn't open Citizen Kane with... It's a sled. It's kind of a no-brainer! Critic, as you know, we think we know what's caused the shambleization. Okay, what? The walls. No, we're not doing that. As you know, it makes a lot of sense. If they use lead paint. No, even for a parody, we're not doing that. You know, oranges typically contain ten segments. Maybe one of them contains shamalization. Fine, make a connection to that, but we're not doing goddamn walls! How are we supposed to make oranges the twist? I don't know! If the freaking giving tree can be an antagonist in a movie, why can't oranges? Now get cracking! You guys like oranges, right? While Leguizamo's gang is not doing very well as they come across a bunch of people who saw early screenings of the movie. I'm gonna give you a math riddle, okay? And you're gonna tell me the answer. What? It's quirky and weird, which to some writers equals brilliant and mind-blowing! How much would you have if I said I would pay you a penny on the first day, and then two pennies on the second, and then four pennies on the third day, and I just kept doubling it, I did this for a month. Oh, I know this one! It's screw you, everybody hates math, we're all gonna die! But he notices a hole, which he could easily plug up, but doesn't, as it causes them all to naturally go insane. My name's Luigi Mario. I'm a Puerto Rican Italian raised by a British Italian who's both my father and my brother. I'm fighting a germaphobe dinosaur who's turned Lance Hendrickson into a mushroom and thinks ordering a pizza is funny. Wahlberg's gang runs across a guy from the military who also isn't sure what direction to go. This town about eight miles behind us. There were bodies on the road into town. Cheese and crackers. Were you just hungry when you wrote this? Cheese and crackers, hot dogs, honeybees. Was it sponsored by the Food Network? But our weird Shyamalan one-shot reveals that other people are confused where to go as well. So they travel in one large group, but one woman gets a call from her daughter in Princeton. Tell, tell her not to go near the window with the tree. Just tell her. Baby, don't go near the window with the tree. Ask her if Princeton's been affected. Oh, ask her if she likes hot dogs! Honey? Honey, you're talking funny. What's wrong with you? How can you tell? Nobody's acted normal in this movie since it was greenlit! So everybody tries to figure out where to go next. If we go west, we'll hit a county called Arendelle. Dirt roads, hardly anybody lives out there. They'll sing a song so much you'll want to stab your ears out with an ice pick, but aside from that, they're cool. But something else in this movie is starting to blow. My firearm is my friend! Private Oster. Toaster strudel and syrup. My firearm is my friend. Oh, ketchup and hash browns, rat feces and Denny's. I don't know. The toxin? Why do you say things like you're on a kid show where the kids are supposed to answer back? Look, I don't know if you guys have heard about this article in the New York Times about honeybees vanishing. I 
Sanser. Filbert? Does anybody know where that is? He's right. The toxin? What? No. We need to do something. Just let me think. They're dying. I need a second. We can't just stand here as an uninvolved observer. I need a we act we're uninvolved observers probability is very low how should we react to dead people a math problem i think this was a joint writing team between hell 9000 and glados tell us what to do i need a second okay why can't anybody give me a goddamn second i'd be scientific douchebag okay back away from the camera guy you're gonna blow snot on the lens what if it is the plant oh you mean that thing we already said it was duh MTM, what a twister! What a twister! They find their way into a model house where everything seems to be fake, so naturally, considering their acting, they mistake props for human beings. My name is Elliot Moore. I'm just going to talk in a very positive manner. Yeah, this is happening, people. We're just here to use the bathroom. And then we're just gonna leave. I hope that's okay. Until then, I hope you don't mind if we put these folks on our most wanted list. Nothing against your kind, but if there's anything we Americans like, it's racial profiling. But another group of people are coming, so they run past this obvious metaphor, fearing that the group will become too big and they'll get infected. Though, again, the way they're talking, how can you tell they're not affected? You got kids? No. How come? You got a problem? She wanted to wait. You need to take, uh personal responsibility for yourself in a relationship. Hey, that's not a toy, it's got meaning to me. So, the kids are talking about a meaningful relationship while the adult is whining to be given his toy ring back. Is Shyamalan dyslexic with age numbers? Does he constantly get them backwards? So after Zoe admits she had tiramisu with a guy late one night, and of course she mentions it was tiramisu because I just assumed this was all written at a buffet somewhere, Wahlberg decides he wants to confess something too. Jess needs a 10 minute rest and some food. We should keep going. If we're gonna die, I want you to know something. I was in a pharmacy a while ago. It was a really good looking pharmacist behind the counter. Uh, didn't you just say you should keep going? This doesn't seem like the time for pharmacy store confessions. I went up and I asked where the cough syrup was. I didn't even have a cough. And I almost bought it. Oh no. So they decide to drop by a house. Is there any way we can get some food? We have a little girl, we just want to get her some food. You best leave now. Come on, we're talking hot dogs, tiramisu, and cough syrup. We need some real conversations out here. You ain't gonna bring that poison gas in here with you. Sir, it's not poison gas. Even if there was, all your windows are open. Duh. We're perfectly normal. On Blackwater, keep on rolling, Mississippi Moon, won't you keep on shining on me? See? We're normal. You are the laundry list of not normal. Everything you're doing is being written down in a book called How Not To Be Normal. There is literally a chapter called Seriously. I can't make this shit up. So to stop the evil crazy gas from getting in, they do the same thing of shooting two little boys off their porch. This was brought to you by... In the grand scheme of things, really no reason whatsoever. But it's a little less awkward dialogue to listen to, eh? Oh, don't worry. That void is filled by this crazy broad who lives in the next house they come across. I suppose the kind thing for me to do is to offer you supper. Well, yeah, that's what I do if a random stranger dropped by my place. Why you eyeing my lemon drink? I ain't gonna ask you again. Well, this place obviously seems safe as they spend the night but slowly realize she may not be all there herself. I hear you whispering. Planning on stealing something? No, ma'am, we're not. Plan on murdering me in my sleep? What? No! I'm not even gonna critique this scene. It's brought so much joy and laughter from how famous it is that it'd be a sin to critique this scene. But I'm gonna do this for shits and giggles. What? It needed to be done. Well, no, it did, but that's what makes it even better. 
So the lady seems to be acting nuttier and nuttier as, well, even the nutty acting seems a little bit off. There's something happening in a few states. In this region, it's not safe. Steve, no! This isn't a crazy gesture. This is a Barbara Streisand singing performance. Actually, maybe it's a bigger connection than I thought. But the tree mojo seems to affect her too, and for an old lady, her head's really got some weight to it. Man, you can smash a melon with that melon. Wahlberg and Deschanel stay in separate buildings, but are able to communicate via a very convenient pipe that allows them to hear each other. It's too dangerous to go outside, isn't it? Yes. This is the end, isn't it? Man, you're fast to give up. It hasn't even been two minutes yet, and already you're like, this is the end, this is the end. You know, movies can go past an hour and a half, though I'm begging you not to. You remember our first date? You bought me the mood ring. It turned purple when you wore it. Then, then we checked the little paper chart, and it turned out that purple meant I was horny. Always good to teach the kid new vocabulary words. Next, talk about how you're putting together your bondage swing. And I swear, I'm not kidding. I actually timed this. They wait literally just three minutes before they decide they can't take it anymore and they go outside to die. Yeah, three minutes. They drag the kid out there too. Man, Lego's Zamo should have been more specific with that demand. It should have been- Don't take my daughter's hand unless you mean it. What it should have been was- Don't wait the length of microwaving a burrito to sacrifice my daughter to tree demons. You'd think that go without saying. Should have been the length of microwaving a Hot Pocket. But, get this, it stops just at the point when they walk outside. I think. The actual surprise of this ending is kind of hard to follow. The name of the location pops up when it shows they're okay. Well, does that mean they were in a safe place the whole time? If so, why did that woman kill herself? I mean, sure she was crazy, but what are the chances she'd have the exact same craziness that makes you walk backwards and off yourself after doing so? Kind of a long shot. But then, just to make things more confusing, they say this! The event must have ended before we went out there. Well, wait, why show us the location at that exact time then? What did it matter? What was the real answer of what happened here? Is this like Clue where we're supposed to guess our twist ending? And yes, by the way, that is the ending. It cuts to three months later, nobody has any idea how or why this all happened, but Deschanel is pregnant! Because that's what this was all about? How does that make any sense? How does any of this make any sense? It's like trying to figure out how Shyamalan keeps coming back in my reviews even though he keeps dying, right? Right. Right. Crap! Get out of here, Shyamalan! In a moment, I want to see how my tropes are coming. Any new developments? Yes! As you know, Jim and I have solved our problems using symbolism. And my strange quirk is saving the day? And we did it all in one shot! Well then, it's time to reveal my big twist. Yeah, you already said, it's walls. No, it's actually something completely different. Alright, what is it then? It's... The walls. That's what you just said it wasn't. Yeah, it's a triple twist. You see, I said it was, then I said it wasn't, only to reveal it was again. That's why I'm the king of twists. I've been to Zumba classes with better twists than that. Wait a minute, you guys aren't Shyamalan anymore? No, as you know, that twist was so lame that it snapped us out of it. Come on, let's go, guys. Just when I was figuring out a way to tie it into oranges, too. Fine, go ahead and tell them not to see my movie, then. Actually, I wasn't going to. Really? You think it's a cinematic masterpiece? No, it's the dumbest thing I've seen in years, but it's very entertaining. From the acting, to the writing, to the directing, everything is completely wrong in this movie. But it's so creatively wrong, it's impossible not to get a laugh out of it. The choices made are so strange and so unnatural that it's one of the funniest unintentional comedies you could watch. So yes, I highly recommend it. Not as an awful drama, but as a hilarious comedy. It's guaranteed to get several laughs out of you. Well, I guess I don't need to shamalize anybody then. 
Wait, I thought you said the wall shamalized everybody. No, that was a quadruple twist. I said it was, then said it wasn't, then said it was, now I'm saying it wasn't again. But wait, if you didn't control everyone, who did? It caused the happening. What's that? Planners got run over by his lawnmower? Woohoo! Cheese and crackers.